Hello everybody, it's Scott here from Hey You Guys. I uh, hope you're well and staying safe in isolation. Uh, we are back with another video review because we know you just cannot get enough of them. Uh, on today's uh, review show, I'm joined by the wonderful Mr. Stefan Pape. How are you, sir? Very good, thank you. How are you? Yes, not too bad, thank you very much. A bit tired today, a bit zombified, but uh, but yeah, but we're in a good headspace for the show because the show's a bit a bit out there, isn't it? So, uh, so yeah, uh, we're going to talk about a brand new show, which airs, I think it's already aired in the States, possibly to the end, which is 10 episodes, but it starts tonight in the UK on AMC UK, which is called uh, Dispatches from Elsewhere, which is the brainchild uh, of Jason Siegel, of course, famous for Forgetting Sir Marshall and How I Met Your Mother and uh, bringing the Muppets back to the big screen in 2011. But he's made some interesting uh, films over the last couple of years, uh, smaller independent films. And uh, he's now brought us this, which is very different to the stuff he's done before. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of an out there concept, but it's one that will keep your attention. Uh, but we're going to talk about that show uh, uh, as we go through the uh, review. Uh, the film, uh, the TV show even, uh, co-stars Andre Benjamin, Sally Field, and the great man himself, Mr. Richard E. Grant, who, Stefan, you spoke to recently about the show, I think earlier this week. And he seemed very, very uh, keen to be part of this, even though he perhaps wasn't quite up to speed on what Jason was going for but it's a kind of concept that really drew him and the rest of the cast in. Mm. Yeah it's just interesting just that, seeing that picture there on Zoom because I spoke to him on Zoom it felt a bit like he was back in I was interviewing him again I'd like to ask him a question. Um, no he was yeah you can see why I think if you if you were presented with this this script and this kind of character and, and world that it would pique your interest because it is one of those quite unconventional sort of, sort of elusive stories isn't it that kind of I think that if you just describe it to someone if I was to sort of go and talk to my wife my family say oh this is just from elsewhere is about I, I think that it's it is just something that makes you go okay tell me more and I think obviously if you're an actor and you're getting script after script anything that you want to hear more about is probably quite enticing um and also yeah if you Jason Siegel is, is becoming such a force in, in in Hollywood I mean he's obviously such a, a a comedic presence and he's made some really great sort of um uh, films and tv series obviously as a comedic actor but i saw a film called the friend last year and he just made me cry constantly he was so good dramatically so he's he's trying sort of new things and pushing himself and i think that's interesting to to anyone really to see what he's going to do next so i can see why richard e grant i was about to call him richard because obviously we're mates now uh why richard was so keen to get involved and obviously if you add in andre 3000 and sally field i think it's a no-brainer really yeah, I think it's a show, as you say, it's a show that is very hard to put in a box. And I think the best, a lot of the best TV shows kind of do that. And it, TV is a space these days that you can experiment with things and people will kind of give you the, not just the space to, to tell the story, but audiences will kind of go along with you on that journey, even if it is six episodes or 10 episodes. So it's very, it's a show that defies expectation and defies, defies um, kind of genre and everything else. It kind of, it's a mix of lots of different things, which I think is really good and really exciting. Um, so to set it up for you, uh, I'm going to read off Wikipedia, so forgive me, but it's it's a show that, that takes a lot of thinking about. But essentially, it's set in uh, Philadelphia and it follows a group of ordinary people who stumble up onto a puzzle hiding just behind the veil of everyday life. They will come to find that the mystery winds far deeper than they ever imagined. So it's, yeah, it's a very out there concept. It reminds me very much of um, a little bit of Maniac, the Netflix show that came out a couple of years ago, which was about kind of humanity and, and people thinking they were they may be meant for more than what they, their their conscious body was was letting them allowing them to do. And this kind of touches on that as well. But it's it's about Jason Siegel watched an interview yesterday and he said it's really about kind of real magic, as if like magic exists in the real world. And reminded me a little bit of like Michel Gondry movies and there's a little bit of David Lynch in there. So it's kind of on those on those wavelengths, but it's its own its own beast. I mean, did it did this take you a little while to get into, Stefan, or did it kind of jump jump at you almost immediately? Uh, right away, actually. I think obviously it breaks the fourth wall in the opening scene because Richard E. Grant sort of stares down the camera and sort of speaks to you, and he says things like, "Right, let's be like that one there." Look, he's <laughs> about to kick his fingers. <laughs> um, and and yes, and but, but when he starts, he sort of addresses the audience, but he all instantly deconstructs the kind of notion of storytelling so he says to the audience like um uh i'm a uh, we don't need long introductions here's our character i'm not going to give you we could spend half an hour trying to set up the scene and almost kind of yeah just sets up the whole series in quite a unique way but it was interesting i think is that the whole point of the 
the mundane, you know, it's him, well, it's it, the whole sort of rigidly Grant's narrating, saying he's, look at this character, this man is, is you, this, this guy is like you. just start that bit again, Stefan? Walking to, you, Stefan, to work, you, he's going to Stefan, get his coffee. Stefan, Stefan, and all... Stefan, yeah. you dropped out on the, uh, uh, on the... So annoying. The, what, what was the, the... Scott, where was it, where he got oh, to, where okay. he disappeared? The main, uh, I think it was where you said the main concept is. Da, 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 oh, okay. Da. Well, I, the, I, I was, I could still hear him, so I was listening. So I. No, I could hear him, but you can. Okay. And then it I'll went. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I can go from the bit about Jason Siegel again. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What's interesting about the kind of the the opening sequences is that uh, Richard E. Grant sets up Jason Siegel's character by saying he's like you, he's like me or you. He's the whole point to this guy is that he. He's just an everyday person. And that sort of obviously enforces the idea that there is, if there is a bit of magic out there, it could be magic that happens to me or you. Uh, but what is interesting, what's quite, quite funny is that the whole point is vain, isn't it? It's him mm. walking to work, looking a bit kind of forlorn. You know, he's doing the same tedious day, going into the same coffee every day. But now at the moment with us all stuck inside, that's the magic, isn't it? That, 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 a bit of magic now would be going into Starbucks and picking up a coffee. It's, it's quite funny that the, the whole concept of this is is that he's sort of fulfilling this tedious, mundane life, and yet at the moment, what he's doing seems so far away. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of timely in that sense, isn't it? It's almost like you say it's a, these people trying to break out of the mundane, and and for a lot of us, we've had to kind of really change our patterns because we're kind of stuck at home and, and doing all the things. And now, as you say, we're looking forward to going to get a Come Starbucks or going to get a cheeseburger at McDonald's or, or going to see a film at the cinema. And it's almost like that becomes our our magic. And it's these guys in this particular world that that's what they're striving for. They're striving for something new and exciting, trying to break out of, you know, Jason Siegel's character works for like a computer company, doesn't he? Just sitting at a computer. And I love the scene at the beginning where he's sitting there and the guy doesn't say any words to him. He just says like, he says something like work, work words or work words, work words like that. Because it's so... <laughs> everything becomes and obviously like I can I can so uh kind of my brain really listens to that because obviously my job in retail that's what you get sometimes you kind of just hear people saying dvd 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 music you know what I mean it becomes that mundaneness and I think this really kind of um celebrates the fact that there there is something bigger out there whether it's magic whether it's you know even something simple like you find yourself a new passion in life and all that kind of stuff so this kind of it's really kind of a whimsical really kind of wonderful journey even though it's steeped in reality there is a kind of like a magic behind it and you really kind of as you say it, it kind of hooks you in pretty immediately um there's a great cast where we talked about Richard Lee Grant I mean Andre Benjamin I haven't seen him for a while he's he's great in this I can't remember his character's name it's like Fred Fred Wynn Fred Wynn is it Fred Wynn they make a joke out of his out of his name being almost two Fred Wynn yeah it's almost like two names in one yeah. uh he's always fantastic uh, Andre Benjamin and you get the great Sally Field which um kind of like i was saying about maniac kind of connects those two because she obviously was in was in maniac as well um and then fredwin sounds like a silly name but then realized in real life his surname is 3000 so <laughs> well, yeah yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's a, a really great ensemble and an ensemble that when you see them together you kind of think that's in itself that's interesting because you wouldn't necessarily put these people together you know in 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 a sort of a cast like this i mean they really kind of bounce off each other really well don't they yeah, and, and also I think that it's a testament to the the the, the 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 whole sort of story and the whole kind of project that these are performers and kind of talents that you don't see in that much. They they seem to pick their roles really carefully. I mean, Andre Benjamin, he was in High Life last year, wasn't he? And obviously the oh, yes. biopic, but his his deviations into the world of acting are, are quite scarce, and it, it it usually has to be something really creatively stimulating for him to, to get involved and Sally Field again is someone who she has no reason just to take small little roles here and there for the sake of it and I think it's the the, the fact that uh, Jason Siegel has assembled this this core group of actors is really just a testament to how interesting a project this is and why and for me you know as an audience member why I'd be keen to watch it is because these are actors that just pick their roles carefully. And I think that's always a good sign. And like you said, they're all so interesting. They've all got such kind of, not just depth, but they all, they've all got kind of quite quirky. They've all got quirks about them. They're all quite sort of um, uh, idiosyncratic actors that are quite sort of push themselves. And I think that, that they all bounce to each other through their kind of oddities. And I think it works really well and really serves the kind of whole otherworldly feel to this show, which obviously, like you said, is steeped in reality, which is 
essential to it working. You need to believe in the authenticity for the magic to feel kind of emphatic. But I do think that, um, yeah, they're all, they're, it's a really great ensemble. And I think from what I've seen, they seem to work really, really well to a point where, like with any good TV series, um, it is usually the, the character development and the dynamics between the actors which make you hooked and want you to see more and instantly after just seeing such a short amount of dispatches from elsewhere i'm already quite keen on this being something that goes on for two for three four five seasons because these are actors you want to spend time with and that's always a quite a good sign i think for a tv program yeah i completely agree it's also one of those shows that you could conceivably see if you did a season two or season three that it kind of was a different group of people i mean not that obviously you would like to see these guys kind of develop and everything else but if they did a season two like say true detective where it was a completely different kind of the same concept but different people it would probably maybe work the same way but the fact that it's all these guys uh, is fantastic i've been such a huge fan of jason siegel i mean i know him from uh, obviously from how i met your mother and forgetting sir marshall and i think he's one of those we talked about ricky gervais the other day on afterlife about how it's so interesting when people who are known for being funny want to break out of that and do something not necessarily just dramatic but something completely off what you would expect of them and i think that's where they kind of thrive i remember him playing uh david foster wallace in yeah. the end of the end of the tour the, the author he was so so good in that film um and he has seemed to be very like you said with some of these other actors he himself has been very picky because i don't think he enjoyed being pigeonholed as you know the guy from sarah marshall or the the you know marshall from um how i met your mother so he has taken on these extra uh, these different roles i haven't seen the friends yet but i hear he's fantastic and he made the discovery with robert redford which is on netflix which is really kind of similarly sci-fi very uh kind of out there concept that was that was very very interesting i don't think it quite worked but in terms of a concept of him doing something different i thought it was it was very very exciting so yeah it's one of those you know tv at the moment is so so strong that it's nice to see that you get something like you were talking obviously about gangs of london yesterday you get something like that coming into the seas you get season two of afterlife and then you get something like this which is very hard to put in a box but that's what makes it kind of exciting um, so for you, Stefan, I mean, obviously you've seen uh, some of it. I mean, you must be excited to see the rest. And are you, do you think audiences in the UK will will take to this? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's. I I, I think it one of the things that was most striking about it because it is quite difficult to review because there's so little you can kind of say. Which, but one of the one of the things you can uh, that, that I did take out of this is just the the, the wanting to see more. That I mean, for me, that's that's the kind of one of the biggest and most important priorities of any tv program is you finish episode one and you want to see episode two because there is so much selection out there at the moment i mean sometimes you don't even have to be grabbed in one episode you have to be grabbed within five or ten minutes or you just go yeah i'm on to the next one um and this like i said i was grabbed right from the start and i, I am interested already to watch episode two and episode three and i'm definitely going to be following this and i think i think uk audiences will, will, will enjoy it and i think obviously it's a cast that people will know I mean these are names and faces that everyone's kind of aware of and I, I think the I think it is more about just taking the leap of faith like the actors did and trying it I think it is one of those shows where if you actually watch it you sit down to watch it and you give it the time I imagine you will want to watch more of it but I think what the problem is at the moment is finding it you know there's so many options out there that uh, you, it's so easy to just go down a Netflix hole and, and sort of lose track of everything else that's going on but I do think if if you do stumble across this and you do watch it I imagine it's a show you you will give time to it's just more just about about taking that leap of faith and, and getting and, and watching it uh, in the first place really but I, I'm confident that those that do will will find something to, to enjoy for sure yeah I wholeheartedly agree I think the the leap of faith the leap of faith thing you said is quite quite endearing to the show itself I think that's what the the characters do in the show take a bit of a leap of faith don't they with these with these new people so it's uh yeah I think we're we would suggest to you that seek this out if you've got access to the AMC UK uh, channel which I, I think is on on Virgin Media and Sky Cinema if you get whatever package uh, comes with that I think it's available there's a two episode uh, debut this evening at nine o'clock on AMC UK so you've got the first two episodes tonight and we strongly recommend you do so and then uh, the old-fashioned one episode a week which for a show like this is actually good because it gives you some time to kind of contemplate and to think about it uh, as opposed to sitting there and just binge watching it where some of the concepts and the ideas might get lost along the way um, so yeah, we're, we are wholeheartedly recommending Dispatches from Elsewhere, which begins this evening at nine o'clock uh, Wednesday. We're recording this April the 
29th. Uh, Stefan, thank you so much for, for joining me. Uh, if you want to go and watch Stefan's full review, interviews, excuse me, with Richard E. Grant, you can on the YouTube channel, it's on there. He talks about the show and some other things and his Oscar activities he had a couple of years ago, which was hugely exciting and fantastic to watch on Twitter with all the celebrities that he met, <laughs> which was hilarious. Uh, so you can go on there. You can also look at all of our videos, a review of Gangs of London, a few other reviews and interviews going up there all the time. So make sure you hit the thumbs up and like the video subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave us a comment down below once you've seen the show. Did you enjoy Dispatches from Elsewhere? Is it something you're going to carry on watching? What did you think? Let us know. Uh, but until next time, uh, we will bid you adieu. Take care and goodbye. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? Indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.